Wow, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is Millionaire Mentorship Call number 192. And our topic for today is time management. Now, folks, I really had to get into this topic because time management is really the bottom line on success. And if time management is the bottom line on success, we have to say to ourselves, how can I manage my time better? This is something that I think we've all struggled with from time to time. Uh, in our book, The Twelve Universal Laws of Success, and for those of you who have not gotten it, I recommend that you get it, and you can pick it up at www12, the number 12, ULS.com. But in our book, we cover time management under the eighth law of success, the law of value and mutual exchange. And to put it mildly, you might say as a spiritual basis, it says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs and neither cast your pearls before swine. And what it simply means that time is your most valuable asset. And so don't give it to people that don't deserve it. Don't give it to activities that aren't worthy of it. Don't spend your, your, your substance on things that are not worthy of you. And so if time is this critical, how we manage it, how we master it is important. I want to throw out a concept, and I look at life and time kind of in three aspects. One, time itself. Time is, is that universal, everlasting to everlasting. Time is, period. Then we have consciousness, and consciousness is awareness of time. And then we have breath. And breath is that, breathing is that dynamic activity that connects consciousness to time. So the moment we come into this level, come into this world, we are now conscious of and a part of the time cycle. And life is about how wisely we utilize our time. What do we do? What do we give? What do we learn? What do we share? Our last week's topic of personal resurrection was really about daring that, that old person, that person that you, you didn't want to be that person anymore, and, and giving birth to the new person, a new you, a person that embodied the goals, the dreams, the, the things that you wanted to do, be, and have. That new person that embodied your, your hope, your dreams, and your new possibilities. But time now is the key to everything because it is in time that we do that, that we achieve our hopes, that we pursue our dreams, that we experience the new possibilities. And so when we look at the end of each day, and I guarantee you that all of us go through this. But at the end of each day, we say, wow, you know, I just did not get the things done today that I wanted to get done. So the question always is, why didn't I get those things done? And what must I do to get them done? What must I do to do the things that must be done to take me where I want to go, to help me become the person I want to be? to help me enjoy the things I want to have. If we look at the definition of time in the dictionary, it says that time is that point at which things occur. Very simple. Time is that point at which things occur. Time is when stuff happens. And the only time is now. There are two types of time. There's real time, 
and there's clock time. Now, clock time is what we're experiencing right now. In other words, that's the, the metric, the, the measure. So there's 60 seconds in a minute, there's 60 minutes in an hour, there are 24 hours in a day, there are 364 and a quarter days in a year. Clock time passes equally and constantly and consistently. Clock time is like the river we talked about before. The life is like a river and we either um, steer our ship, our existence and our goals along that river to achieve the things we're seeking or the river will take us wherever it wants us to go. The other type of time is what we call real time. And real time is relative. Real time flies or drags based on what we're doing. Think about it. Well, when you're sitting in your car in a traffic jam, heading across the bridge, an hour seems like an eternity. That's real time. But when you look at your children and all of a sudden they're 12 years old and it seems like they grew up overnight, man, that's real time. And so real time depends on what you're doing, the impact of it, the results of it. So how do we take control of that? How do we take control of the real time in our life? Well, the first thing is that we don't really live by clock time. We live by real time. All the gadgets that we have, the planners, the, the computers, the phones that we have to manage time with their alarms, they're helpful. But clock time is really irrelevant because the alarm goes off saying it's time to get up in clock time. But, when, but then we have to make a decision as to whether we're going to get up or not. That's real time. Or we have to make a decision whether we're going to spring out of bed and get moving immediately or whether we're going to drag along. And I know all of us have experienced that those days you wake up and you just don't feel like moving. That's real time. So real time depends on what we're doing. Real time is mental. Real time exists between our ears, inside our mind. We create life in real time. Anything that we create, we can manage. We can't manage clock time because those hours, those minutes go by regardless. But it's about real time. What we do within clock time that the difference in our life occurs, that success or failure happens. In business, for example, time is critical because those hours go by regardless of what we do. When you're in business, for example, as an entrepreneur, <laughs> at the end of the day, there, there's that expectation of accomplishment. But if you did nothing, you get nothing. In real time, we do what we choose to do. So achievement, accomplishment, or the lack thereof is in our hands. Jobs operate on the combination of real time and clock time. <laughs> in other words, we have to be to work on the clock. Okay? We have to perform at a certain level of, of, of productivity and efficiency to keep the job. And that's all about clock time. But then when we're at work in real time, then what we do actually, what we get done is in real time. And so we sort of learn how to do just enough to keep from getting fired. <laughs> it's very interesting. When we're on a job working on somebody else's dream, we only give them enough of our real time to keep from getting fired. But the reverse side of that is they only pay us enough on the clock time <laughs> to keep us from quitting. 
So how we spend our time is critical to our success. So let's look around and let's, let's change this frame of reference. Let's not say spend time. Let's say invest time. That time is like a seed. It's our most valuable asset. And so when we spend time, there's that feeling that it's gone forever. And it truly is. But when we invest time, in our real time, when we invest time, what we do becomes a seed for the future. If we sow the seed of procrastination, then we experience a future of shoulda, woulda, coulda. But if we sow a seed of action, of do it now, of purposeful action, then the future is one of realization of our achieved results. And so the first thing I want us to think about and to focus on is that think of time as an investment. Don't think of spending our time. Think of investing our time so that whatever we put our time into, there's an expectation of return. There's an underlying, you might say, sense of value, a sense of reason, a sense of purpose now in everything we do. There are, three, there are three elements of time, you might say, of real time. Thoughts, communication, and action. Regardless of the, 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 life, that, uh, the, the life we live or the type of business that we're in, we always end up investing our thoughts, our communication, and our action either actively into desired results or passively into whatever comes along. You know, as an entrepreneur, and even in life in general, we are frequently interrupted. We're frequently pulled in different directions. We may not be able to eliminate those interruptions, but we do have a say in how much time we give or we invest in those interruptions. How much time we give in the thoughts, in the communication, in the action that take away from whatever we're doing or whatever we set out to do. We've seen situations, and I know all of us have experienced this, where we go to talk to a person about a particular thing, but when we get there, we get sidetracked and and we never discussed the, whatever it was we went to talk to them about. And the time goes by and we never get around to it. And then sooner or later, the results come. And the results now come not based on our intention, but, they, but based on the fact that we did not communicate. We did not invest that time properly. That we permitted ourselves to get distracted. So now let's look at ways that we can develop our ability to manage time better. If every moment is an investment in the future, and it, is, and it is, then doesn't it make sense to invest each and every moment properly to get the maximum results? So how do we do that? Step one, we have to see how we're spending our time already. You know, many of us have been involved in diet products and diet programs, and one of the keys in the diet program is to make a list of everything you eat during the day so that you can see where you're getting those calories. Well, similarly, do a diagnostic of how we spend our time each day. What do we do? What are the activities we do? Once we know what we're doing, then we can now improve it. So if we really want to improve our ability to use time more effectively, we have to do that diagnostic, that checkup from the neck up. So make a list of everything we do in 15-minute intervals. I recommend that you write out whatever you did every 15 minutes. From the time you get up until the time you go to bed at night. I guarantee that you will be shocked. Just the example of doing that, you know, 
I guarantee you this, that when you do it your first one or two days, you'll find that somewhere along the line you got distracted and you didn't write it down. So just the fact that doing that diagnostic is therapeutic in helping you learn how to value and use your time more wisely. Example, 7 o'clock, got up. 7.15 to uh, 7.30, I showered and from 7.30 to 8 I got dressed. From 8 to 8.30 I had breakfast. From 8.30 to 9 I traveled to my office. From 9 o'clock to 9.15 I spoke with John. From 9.15 to 9.30 I returned calls. In other words, this is just an example but when we break down our time in this fashion, we can see what we're doing. We can see how we're either investing our time with expectation of positive return or wasting our time and let the weeds get us. It will blow you away because I know it, may, it amazed me how much time I wasted during the day. And when you do this exercise, you're going to be shocked. But it's going to be so therapeutic so instructive now you see where you, what you're doing each day if you can see it you can fix it number two assign a time to every activity or communication that is important for your success you know often Sandra says I said well you know I, I've got to I write an article and she'll say, well, what time are you going to start doing? What time did you set aside to write that article? And I'm thinking, well, I hadn't set aside a time yet. Well, guess what? If you don't schedule it, you won't do it. And so for all of us listening today, all of the important things you have to do, so assign the time to do them. As you lay out your day, as you design your day, Lay it out in these little time compartments so that you can task yourself to do better. You know, when I've been around people with great wealth and great power and great influence, one of the keys to getting there is to master the time cycle. And so when you go in their office, you literally, you better be there on time. If they were going to give you 10 minutes, you got it, and then they're ready for you to get out of there. There's no idle conversation. There's no chit-chat. I mean, it's not totally robotic, but their goal is to get the maximum output from every moment invested. So assign a time to every endeavor. You know, sometimes we just do a to-do list. And I, I, I was a firm believer in to-do list. But what you find each day is when you have a to-do list, you get to the end of the day and there's stuff left over that you didn't do. And it's primarily because it wasn't scheduled. And as a result, it then gets carried over to the next day. Well, after you go through three or four days, that entire process has you literally paralyzed because you're carrying over so many things that you can't get anything done in the future days. And all of that comes from not having an assigned time to do a task, to, do, to, to think the thoughts, to handle the communication, or to take action. When you study the lives of successful people, you'll find that they use their time in a purposeful manner. You'll find that they are most protective of their time. They don't give it away. Give you a key. One of the great ones told me this. He said, when you have an appointment with a person of power, don't call them and say, I need an hour of your time. You say, I need five minutes, sir. And be sure now, when you go in, be sure that whatever you have to say is so powerful that you can get their attention, and then they can choose to give you more time. When they're an effective time manager, they leave time, little spots to be able to fill in and to assign things that may have come up unexpectedly. But you have to sell the package. You have to sell yourself in, in that five minutes. Step three, spend at least 50% of your time each day engaged in thoughts, 
communications, and activities that produce desired results. As you plan your day, set it up so that at least 50% of your time is spent doing the important things first, the productive things first, the productive conversations, the productive thoughts, the productive activities. In business, we often say at least 50% of your time must be spent in income producing activities. We call them IPAs. In life, same thing. Spend at least 50% of your time on things that are important, that take you where you want to go, to help you achieve the things you want to achieve. But don't plan your time so tightly that you don't have a little wiggle room. Because things happen. Important interruptions come about. And many of them, when you look at them, you say, I need to take this call. As a leader, as a person who's on that success journey now, you, you have the choice to, to make the call. You have the choice to, to clear your calendar, to change up your schedule wherever you need to. Step number four, schedule for those interruptions. You, know, you don't have to write them down. But remember this, give yourself that wriggle room so that you can, when things happen, you can back up, you can go forward, so at the end of the day, you still got everything done that you had to do. Step five, and this is the jewel, take 30 minutes each day to plan your day. This is like the farmer who must water his crop, who must pull up the weeds, where well, your planning session that 30 minutes is probably the most important time you'll ever spend. One of the mistakes that I made, and I'm sure that many of you probably make, is to plan half the day. I know that maybe there was some assumption that if you got through half of the day, the rest of the day will take care of itself. Well, it's very interesting that when you do that, at the end of the day, you'll find that half of the day has slipped away. Anything you did not plan anything you did not schedule, interestingly, did not get done. I like to do my, um, I call it the 80-20 rule. And in other words, there's some days that things just go off. But you try to minimize those type of days. You know they happen, but you don't let them get out, out bent, get you bent out of shape. The sixth step is to program your mind with expectations. In other words, whatever you do, whatever you set out to do each day, to create a vision of what it's supposed to be like. When you start to create through that, you know, call it the law of expectations. When you start to create that, that, that vision of what you want it to be like, it's amazing how it can happen. When you put these two together, a step five and step six to, to program with expectations and then the idea of, of uh, spending 30 minutes planning your day. If you write out your daily plan for what you want to accomplish tomorrow, the night before, your subconscious mind can begin to work on it and start to create and organize the things to make it happen. I mean, it's amazing. When you've written out your game plan the night before and you go to sleep on it, your subconscious mind starts to get it done for you. Now when you superimpose that and say, Program yourself your expectations. That when you're in business, have a, have a vision of how you want it to work out. In relationships, have a vision of how you want it to work out. You know, when we call prospects, when we deal with distributors, when we deal with customers, when we deal with our children, it's important to just spend two or three minutes creating a picture, especially a mental picture of the way you want the outcome to be. When I used to teach sales, I'd 
tell folks to before they get on the phone to get in front of a mirror so they can be smiling so they can feel they're projecting a warmth that would make people want to do whatever it is they want them to do. This process also begins to create and lay down, you might say, a spiritual framework for realization and bringing about that which you want to do. Don't get hung up in it now. Just a couple of minutes, just exactly what your expectations are. Step seven. Buy yourself a great big do not disturb sign. Folks, interruptions come about only because of permission. We let other people's crises interrupt us. To be effective in business, to be effective in life, in education, in whatever your endeavors may be, you have to have a do not disturb period, a period where nothing and no one is permitted to come into your space. Then you can give your total energy to the thoughts, to the communication, to the activities that will bring about the results you're seeking. Number eight, practice not answering the phone. You don't have to answer the phone just because it rings. Don't respond to emails just because you, they show up. For those of you who know me, I do not respond to texts or emails immediately. I have programmed my phone so that it does not make a noise or vibrate or twiddle or do anything when it gets a text or an email. The only thing my phone does is ring. And even then, I look at that phone number because there's sometimes that there's some calls that are coming in that I, I make that choice to evaluate whether I want to give my time to this call or stay on focus, stay on point with what I'm doing. Even when things happen, that when, when you get those interruptions that seem critical, you still have to stay in control. As you begin to organize your time, you'll find that you cannot... Remember I said, don't give that which is holy to the dogs, to swine. Not calling anybody. But in other words, don't give up your time to other people's challenges. It doesn't mean you don't love them, but it means that you care about yourself more. Friends tell me sometimes that by my not responding to the text is not good text etiquette. I don't care. You have to value your time so much that you don't give it away for that which is not valuable to you and where you want to go. <laughs> One of the great quotes says, you can't win the Kentucky Derby riding two horses. In other words, you can't divide your time. People think they can multitask. But truly, the mind is most effectively when it's focused on a single endeavor. To do two things is to do neither. I'll say that again. To do two things is to do neither. So those of us who think that they can listen and look at the phone, at the text coming in, trust me, you're not hearing. You're not absorbing. Number nine, block out distractions. You must actively block out distractions. You know, when you're a good person, you, you're like the light. You know, in the country, you are in the darkness of the porch. You don't see any bugs, any gnats, any mosquitoes. The moment you turn that light on, it attracts every gnat, every mosquito in the neighborhood. It's amazing. Well, when you're the person that you want to be, when you're pursuing your goals and your dreams, you become a light. And you will attract people into your space. You have to actively choose to block out those distractions. Otherwise... They will get you. We're going to close now with the nine time wasters. We've given a framework, but they're nine time wasters that chew up your time, that steal your time, that undermine your dream. Time waster number one, crisis management. 
Lack of planning leads to crisis. Crisis management steals your time, especially other people's crisis. You know, I used to feel bad when people would call me and they needed me. Oh, my bill is due. I didn't pay my light bill and this happened. I'm like, wait a minute. You can't let other people's crisis pull you away from your assigned time and your mission. Number two, telephone interruptions. Take command of your telephone. Don't answer the phone just because it rings. Number three, time waster. Lack of goals and objectives. Where there's no vision, the people perish. When you're not organized, you spend a lot of time, you waste a lot of time searching for things, trying to find things. Number four, attempting to do too much. It's so easy to undermine ourselves by attempting to do too much. Sometimes when we make a to-do list and it's impossible to do all the things, it frustrates us and it's a way of self-sabotaging. What is really undermining us is not the things, but the fact that we just attempted to do too much. Number five, ineffective delegation. Once you give somebody a job, let them do it. Sandra used to say, when you're teaching a kid to make up the bed, they, they, when they start making it up, it's not going to be perfect. But if you interject and say, let me show you how to do it, let me do it for you, I want all these ends tucked, that child will never learn how to, how to make a bed properly. In our business, in network marketing especially, where duplication is the key, when we give a, a person an assignment, it's important to let them try it, let them do it, to let them learn, practice, and master it. One of the reasons many of us fail in network marketing is because we keep using our standards for other people's performance. Other people get it, but based on their own time. Number six, time waste of personal disorganization. Your office is a reflection of your mind. And some of us, if you walk into their office and say, boy, your mind must be full of clutter. Number seven, lack of self-discipline. Your success journey requires you to be the boss and the employee. You can't give yourself a day off as an employee when the boss side of you knows the goals that must be accomplished that day. Self-discipline is truly the key to, th to time management because without self-discipline, you can't have focus. Now, this is a heavy one, folks. The number, top one of the top reasons, top time wasters is your inability to say no. I'll say it again. Your inability to say no. We become so concerned about other people's feelings that we trade our most valuable assets, our time, to spend dealing with other people's issues. It's not about whether they love you or whether you love them. It's not about being callous. But trust me, if you're not there, they'll figure it out. They'll find somebody else's time that they can steal. They may even handle it on their own. You find that the same people keep coming back to you time and time again because they know they can interrupt you. They know they can pull you off your path. The, under, the inability to say no will truly undermine your success. And then finally, procrastination. Procrastination is the thief of dreams. And the reason is it looks like we're doing something. You know, we can say organize and get stuff pretty fine, but if we don't take action, it does not happen. There's only one time, and that time is now. If we don't do it in the now, then it won't get done. Now, let's think about this. The years break down into months. Every month breaks down into days. Every day into hours, every hour into minutes, every minute into seconds. It is within the seconds of the day that we have to manage our life properly, that we must get things done. Let me share some quotes that will help us wrap up today. Shakespeare said, it's better three hours too soon than one minute late. Delmo Swartz said, Time 
is the school in which we learn. Time is the fire in which we burn. Rodin, the great artist, said, Nothing is a waste of time if you use the experience wisely. So don't beat up on yourself when things don't work out. Just take the time to learn from it. William Penn said, Time is what we want most, but what we use worst. That's the soul of time management. Shelton Howard said, The common man is not concerned about the passage of time. The common man will chill. The man of talent is driven by the passage of time. And so we'll close this time management piece with a poem. This is the beginning of a new day. God has given me this day to use as I will. I can waste it or use it for good. What I do today is important because I am exchanging a day of my life for it. When tomorrow comes, this day will be gone forever, leaving in its place something that I have traded for it. I want it to be gain, not loss. Good, not evil. Success, not failure. In order that I shall not regret the price I paid. So manage your time wisely, for nothing is impossible. Your life is built on the wings of time. Your life is built on the blueprint of your dreams and the diligence of your efforts in pursuing those dreams over the time that you have been given. Use your time wisely. Each time, each moment is a seed from which you can grow a dream or a nightmare. The choice is up to you. And so it is. The best is yet to come.